Paul has over 20 years HR experience across Africa and the United Kingdom in the public sector, financial and airline industries. As a group HR director of East Africa Breweries Limited, he has led the HR function to deliver strong employer branding with EABL receiving the inaugural Deloitte Best Company to work for in the year 2012. Paul has been the chairman of the Institute of Human Resource Management in Kenya for over five years and led in the enactment of the 2012 Human Resources Professionals Act. His earlier career was in the office of the president before joining Barclays Bank and later Kenya Airways. As a group HR director of Kenya Airways, he was a project leader for the implementation of the $12 million flight simulator project. He also successfully led the implementation of the first Barclays HIV AIDS assistance program in Botswana, which was one of the top 10 comprehensive workplace programs in the world by UNAIDS in 2008. Paul was featured as the Manager of the Year at the Company of the Year Awards in Kenya. Paul has continued to chair several school boards and also continues to make presentations at professional forums both within and outside the country. Paul's purpose is to inspire the possibility in others. Please welcome Mr. Paul Kasimu. There's no way I can stand there. Rory, the best way to set up somebody is to start saying the best thing after sliced bread, whatever country is going to do everything right. And then obviously uh, the rest is now keeping up with that expectation. Uh, morning, everybody. Uh, how are you? The mood in the room is so sober. You would think they're talking of something other than millennials. <laughs> no, seriously. Anything other than millennials. And I think I've been told I should run my bit. When we came in, we were told this thing will run by itself. What I want to do is take him on from where Rodi has stopped. My personal experience. So, about 20 years there, I have millennials in my house. And everything you spoke to was absolutely because I connect with it. And I have a colleague of mine here, uh, Nick, works especially with the Global Credit Program, and I will share with you one or two things. I have seven minutes to do that. One of the things I thought I should do is just share with you some of the trends that are coming through, the trends in the workplace as I see it. So what's in public sector, what in an airline, what in a bank. And now, somebody told me, I, I stopped uh, flying high to being high, which is describing how I left Kenya with a lot of Haters are everywhere, but we're not talking about them today. The piece about globalization, I think, kept the global village. It's no longer one place. I think this one is not working, but that's fine. I'm only seeing myself, calling myself like that. The piece about digital era. And I used to complain about digital era until my daughter went for an interview on Skype with somebody in Colorado to go for a medical program. And I was like, how did that go? Said, uh, we finished 30 minutes interview. And then I was given an assignment, which I worked on in 15 minutes and I submitted. And right in a room. Um, so I'm like, and did you pass? Three days later, she had a invitation letter to go for a medical program. I'm just like, okay, fine. From now on, I'm not going to talk about digital because I'm looking at you with the frame of mind of how I was brought up in Kampani, and the only thing that was there was honey. <laughs> <laughs> the piece about, uh, I think you can, you can pick that, but I want to speak to the bit about the demographic change. We have four generations in the workplace. Four generations. So we're talking of millennials. Before that was, and I'll share with you the ages. Baby boomers are in there. I, do you know the generation that was there before baby boomers? What was it? The, the traditionalists or veterans or the silent generation. Nobody talks about them, and they're actually silent. And they were born, I think, that period before, during World War, before World War, which is why they were So one of the things is. Uh, a pre-generational event. Coming to the generations, and I think I need to talk to that, the slides are coming. What I think I've realized, the biggest challenge I have is not the millennials at the workplace. It's actually the generation X's and baby boomers. 
I once told the millennials, you know, Gen Ys are asking me, what, how can we deal with the millennials? They have their problem. And they, they told me, Paul, no, actually, the problem is not us. The problem is them. And as a result, I did something that I thought was actually kind of uh, revolutionary. And I came up with a program called Amazing People Management. Because I discovered the biggest thing I have right now is not to deal with millennials. It's to deal with anybody who's in the leadership position. And what we did was brought in a white belt, red belt, black belt, facing of how you could grow as a line manager, impactful. I was so pleased when I met the global CEO of the edge that we came into a point where he said, Paul, can I have this adopted globally? And it was 180 countries translated into five languages. And I think the biggest piece was the self-awareness. And as we leave this room, if you ask me, what is the one thing you need to do is just take a moment to ask yourself, what are the blind self as a leader that you need to start addressing? Because that's your white belt. The red belt is about how do you then cross over using the 70-20-10 principle. And 70% is the jobs you do, 20% is coaching and mentoring, and only 10% will be classroom training. Workforce strength, impacting talent. The first wave of pool. Work is not a place. Work is a space. It's what has come to reality. So why do we even have offices? Why can't we just let people deliver outcomes, not where they are, but working? The piece about the uh, generation I spoke to that talent scarcity. This is the only area where you have unemployment and scarce resources. A disconnect between the world of work and academia. So hosting something like this is one of those things I would say, how we bring the narrative closer to what is relevant in the workplace. I'll pick something like the free agent from my grave to cradle died long time ago. The new psychological contract is employability for development. And I tell people, you have employment security as opposed to job security, because that's the most <coughs> And some of us have closed branches in Barclays. I worked in a place called Pool in the UK, where we closed 100, it was about 150 positions. And I remember people telling me, Paul, you know what? I have employment security. Take the job away. I have a job already. And I think that's what I'll be asking some of you to say. Are you fit for purpose? What do generations expect from their bosses? And millennials are already managers. When I looked at my workforce uh, floor, I think we have more than a third of my workforce are millennials. The other half are, actually more than half, are Gen X. And a few surviving baby boomers who don't seem to retire. But they also kind of repackage themselves and they behave and walk and smell like millennials. No, in a way. So give it up to the guys who have remained relevant, irrespective. And you'll see what they wear. But the point here is I want to make them is leave me alone. Tell me what needs to be done. Let me do it. Don't micromanage me and give me clarity is what baby boomers are saying. Two Gen Y is promote me, be truthful about what is going on, give me experience, <coughs> recognize me. And then the Gen Y, no, the millennials are saying, coach mentally, be competent. What millennials hate are incompetent bosses. They walk. There are not two ways about it. Give me an incompetent boss and I'll show you that I fought with my feet. This is what I've come to realize. Be approachable, reduce hierarchy. Friend, be a friend. Make it fun. Bob Collymore is referred to by the guys in the concert as Bob. Yeah, hi Bob. And some of the guys who have left will look at that and almost cringe. Because how? Respect. I worked in office of the president. That was my first place. And we used to be called sir even when I was 22. <laughs> <laughs> the past is about 
Work from 5 to 9 to 5, now it's work anytime. Work in a corporate office, work anytime. That's what I say. Use carbon equipment, why? I want to have my equipment. Tell me what to do. Do not micromanage, is what they're saying. Focus on inputs, there's his output. And create your own life. If you don't promote them, they will promote themselves. And they are very, very clear about titles, so you have to call them a director early now. <laughs> they will create their own business. This is a business slide, but I want you to pick a few things there. 1980 to Ronnie's point, 80 million in the US, and I think if you look at the percentage of workforce, by 2030, three quarters of workforce will be millennials. So it's I actually feel sad for people who are still held in the work of the past, who still talk of, you know, we want to create leaders of tomorrow. You be relevant. Actually, you are irrelevant even now. <laughs> we say why, thanks me. They say why not. They came, you remember the white generation? Why not? I think it's the piece that we have. Common with misconception or perceptions of associated with millennials. I think the piece is that common place is uh, entitlement, they are lazy, they lack respect for authority, poor work ethic, and lack of loyalty. They have no loyalty to an individual. They, are, they have a kind of uh, authority, or the thing they will recognize most is a cause. If you stand for a cause, then they will be with you. But if you have no identity as a leader, you lose them. And I think that's the point that we are asking. Attracting and retaining them, you need to connect them for greater good. Allow them to complete, complete meaningful work. If they don't do something they feel is meaningful, you will lose them. And I think the other big thing that I've seen is that if you don't hear it, then you lose them. And even when they are present, they go. <coughs> Yesterday we were again in the first time to work for one of the multinational. The big one who are again <coughs> talk to Kenya women finance in their beach. I think they've tried very well. But one of the things I do every year is ask for what is it that you want to change here? And we discover the biggest thing they say is that just listen to me. And when you listen, do something about it. And I've watched you twice, you've ignored me twice. Third time I'll not ask you, I'll be gone. It's more than the money. 65% say personal development, to your point again. 34% are likely to rank development as one of the most things, important things. And professional development. Again, we can talk to this later. But the point is, it's not just about money. And you saw the piece about the budget, that 1% taking the salary. I think we'll share this slide later. But what we did, at at the edge of EFBL was we advertised for 16 positions of trainees. 8,000 applications. And we only saw the last 60. The rest were done online. We did not meet anybody. Interviews online after the last minute. It was amazing as a, as, a, as a bit. And I think this is my last slide. Believe in the millennial programs that drive excitement across the organization. Get senior leadership to buy in and be business champions. I've had to change managers. In fact, I remember when I started the parties, I would never take my trainees to some managers because they couldn't grow anybody. They killed talent. I wouldn't bring them near anybody to lead. In fact, they should deal with things, not people. So, yeah, cars, anything but people. Get ahead of the game, plan well in advance. <laughs> Get enough time to attract uh, talent, use data, and try to drive your employer plan. Because I've realized that is the most important thing in the whole profession. Thank you once again. I think we will interact with the one-on-one -on -one rush. But my answer to you is, what have I seen about the millennials? This is their time. Baby boomers will try to create space for them. That's what I'm asking to do. Thank you again.